God bless you, my friends. God bless you, New York City. God bless you, wherever you're from, wherever you're going. God bless you. The mercies of God are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of an almighty God. We lift his name up because he is worthy to be praised. And even though man wants to be defiant against a holy God and shake our fists at him, he is still worthy to be praised. Even though we are broken and in misery, uh, oftentimes in shame and guilt and regret, the mercies of God are still new every morning and he is still worthy to be praised. So we here, God bless you. So we're here on this street corner today to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, to give him glory and honor and praise because he is all deserving. In our brokenness and our sin, God saw a way for man. And he sent the man Jesus Christ, fully man, fully God, coming in the form of a servant, humbling himself, laying down his life. The, the Lamb of God, he who knew no sin became sin so that through him we might be made the righteousness of God. And the man Jesus Christ, living a perfect life, laid his life down on the cross for us, my friends. And by his stripes we can be healed. The certificate of death for all your sin can be nailed to the cross with Christ. And there is forgiveness of sin for you and for me. But the Bible says there's no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. And we need a sacrifice, a payment for our sin, and that was taken care of at the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ paid a price that you and I could never pay. He paid a price so that we could have life with Jesus, we could have everlasting life with the Father, that He's God to prepare a place. He said, in my Father's house are many rooms, and He's God to prepare a place for those who are His. You see, there's an important distinction from those who belong to God and those who are enemies of God, those who do not belong to God. In our sin, we are enemies of God, separated from Him because of sin, because of the rebellion of the human soul against the Holy God. But God made a way through Jesus Christ as the door of our salvation, as the blood by which we can enter into the presence of God. He made a way by Jesus Christ so that we could then be adopted sons and daughters, no longer enemies, but born again and adopted into his kingdom, given an inheritance, made heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And this is the truth, my friends. Many of you might wonder, why is there a man yelling on the street corner? I don't really want to hear this. And it's because of this. We are desperate for your soul. I'm not here for any other reason than I want your soul to know God. I want you to be hungry for Jesus in the way that we know and are hungry for Jesus. I want you to want God's love the way that I want God's love. And I want you to be desperate for His grace in the way that we as Christians are desperate for His grace. We hunger and thirst for righteousness. And so we're on the street corner to reach you because many of you will never step foot into a church. And I'm not going to wait until you decide to go to church. I'm going to bring the gospel to you because I'm desperate for your soul. I don't want you to fall into destruction. I don't want you to be eternally separated from God. I want you to know that when you die, you can be with the Father and that the promises of God are faithful and just and whole and, 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 and were and everything. That the promises of God can be everything in your life. Everything good wrapped up and put inside of you that you can cling to the promises of God day in and day out. My friends, Jesus Christ is the Holy One of Israel. He is the, the Mount Zion. He's everything. He's worthy to be praised. The rising of the sun and the setting of the same do at the bowing of God. God brings the sun to give him glory, takes the sun for his glory. And in the same way, he raised up Jesus Christ after his death. He once gave his life, but was resurrected in glory. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he can resurrect you from death to life. Not in your flesh, but in your spirit. So that later on, you're resurrected also in your flesh. And will be given glorified bodies to live for all of eternity with the Father in heaven. My friend, this is a beautiful truth. And I'm speaking quickly, but I want you to understand the emotion and the intensity and the passion is for a reason. I am desperate for your soul. I am desperate for you to know Jesus the way that we know Jesus. And I want to know him more and more. I don't know him the way that I want, but I am seeking. And the flesh gets in the way every day. The flesh wants to get in the way. The flesh wants to rise up. 
The flesh wants to bring rebellion. The flesh wants to bring di different temptations. But every day, we as Christians crucify our flesh. We put on the mind of Christ. Oh, my friend, it's so much more than what you know about God through television, radio, social media. Jesus is not this caricature that you've been told about. Christianity is not this group of crazy religious people that you know about. We are here on a street corner only passionately seeking your soul. We don't want your money. We don't want anything from you. We want you to go to God and give your soul to Jesus Christ. To be raised up as a born-again believer so that the hatred and the pain and the turmoil and the heartache and the anxiety and the depression can be crushed and destroyed and God can lift you up with Him to give you hope to give you hope because you're not going to find what you hope for through the materialism and the vanity and the, and the, 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 the envy and the pride of life and all these things that the world wants you to get involved in and tied up in. Oh, we're searching desperately through social media. We'll do anything and everything to get the world to like us. Oh, my friends, desperately we seek for God. Oh, excuse me, desperately we seek for the world to validate us for one reason or another, but God is saying, come to me, oh, who are weary and heavy laden, and I will lift you up, I will give you rest, I will bring peace to your soul. I didn't say this, Jesus is saying this. And whether your pockets are full or your pockets are empty, all are welcome in the kingdom of God. Repent and cry out to Jesus. Repent and cry out to Jesus. This is not a prosperity gospel. This is not a self-help gospel. This is not a false gospel or another gospel. I'm not speaking about another Jesus. I'm speaking about the Jesus of the Bible. Not a cartoon Jesus or a hippie Jesus. Not a greasy grace Jesus. But a God that is both just and forgiving. He wants you so much to give Him everything. So much so that He'll send forces spiritual warriors out into the highways and the byways the city streets and every place in between to cry out and to invite you to come in to the feast there will come a day where god will judge the living and the dead and we will stand before the throne of god judged by what we have done and there is a price to be paid for sin the Bible says the wages of sin is death, my friends, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And we can mock God, we can make fun of God, you can scoff, laugh, whatever you want to do, I don't care what you think of me, but love Jesus Christ, because that is everything. You don't have to feel any type of way about me, I want your soul to know God. Not some far off God, not a God made of human hands. I don't want you to worship this building, this temple made with human hands. I want you to worship the one who created the wind and the waves, painted the sky. I want you to worship the God who created the DNA and the cells in your body, who painted the beauty around you. We mock and we scoff and we shake our fists at a holy God, not understanding that it gives you the breath in your lungs, and yet we defy him. It is by the mercy of God that you weren't in hell yesterday. You could have died yesterday, been in hell this morning, but God has you here listening to this gospel. Not a gospel that I came up with, but it's the gospel found in the Holy Word of God. But in, li in Jesus there is life. In sin there is death. Jesus took care of sin by his blood. He gave himself because it took everything. And he is everything, so he gave himself. He gave everything. He who knew no sin became sin so that through him we might be made righteous. And you can't earn righteousness with God. You can't earn favor from God. He wants your whole soul. And if you give him everything you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, the favor of God will come through that. But you can't come to God through male teaching by being a good person, by going to church every Sunday, giving 10% of your money. Some of these things are good. But with a dead heart, it means nothing, and you find yourself still on the road to destruction. But God is saying, come out from amongst them, my people, and be ye separate. Do not collect yourself and gather yourself together with the world's systems. But be separate, be a peculiar people, a holy nation. Let my power raise you up.
I'm full of fire and passion and desperation for your soul and nothing else. I want you to know Jesus. Think about me, however. I know I look silly. I know I'm speaking very loudly and a little bit like, woo, a little bit much. But it's because I'm so desperate for you to know him. I want you to love him the way that we love him. And I could love him more, but there's a starting point, my friend. Love him more than I can love him. Go beyond what I have gone. But I know I'm out here because I love him. And he wants your soul. So he sent me here today so you could hear this message. And there's no more important message in this life than this right here. They were born into sin. We're enemies of God. It's what we do. We sin against God. But God had a plan to bring him, bring people back to himself. But by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, he had a perfect plan to give us access to the Father. And if we believe in what Jesus did, if we confess him as Lord, and we believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you put a spirit inside of us, and we can be saved. No longer an enemy of God, but friends of God, children of God, adopted sons and daughters of the Most High. Oh, my friends, this is how we know that we know him, that we love one another, that the peace of God is found in us towards our men and that we seek out not things of this world, but things from heaven above, that we seek out godly things, that our hearts yearn and burn for eternal matters. Do we want Jesus more than we want all of this other stuff? And that we're willing to forsake the world because what has the world done for you anyway? What is the word done for you, my man? God is saying, give me everything and I'll give you life. Not just in this life, but in the life to come. You see, my eternal life has already begun. So that even when my flesh dies and my body goes back to the dust of the earth, my soul will be with God for all of eternity. There's a beauty in that. To know that no matter what, whether God gives me breath or he takes it away, I am going to be with Jesus. Absent from the body, I am present with the Lord. And so there's a peace and a fire that comes with being a desperate man who loves to serve God and to give him everything. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Or if you would only come to him. I want through the testament of our life to bear fruit unto righteousness so that you can taste of the goodness of God and know that there is a God in heaven who loves you, who wants to save you. And if you don't, if you say no, thank you, that you're headed on a road to destruction and there are many that go that way and I don't want you to be one of them. I don't want you to go to hell for all of eternity. I don't want you to be in fire and flame and torment. But there is a better way and you can't earn it. You can't buy it. You're never going to be good enough through human effort, it is a free gift of God, the free gift of God, of salvation in Jesus Christ for all who what? Believe. Believe by faith in what Jesus Christ alone has done. That he gave himself, he gave his body, broken, bruised, bleeding, crown of thorns on his head, humiliated and shamed. All of his followers, they fled, they hid, scared for their life. Jesus on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Our sin separates us from God and all of us sin. So we need something. We need the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Rich or poor, old or young. Whether you're a drug addict, a drunk, a murderer, or a rapist, God can save you and change you. He's not going to leave you in your sin. He's going to take you from it and give you a testimony. You can be the most powerful, influential businessman in New York, living a billionaire row, money in your pockets overflowing. Diamonds so expensive, I don't even know how to count that high. And yet if you don't know Jesus, your soul will be in hell, eternally separated from God for all time. But even the rich man can find Jesus. Even those who love money and the things of this world and the frivolousness of life can find Jesus. All, my friend, the Bible says all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord. I serve you. I give you my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength. I repent. Forgive me. Change my life. Live inside of me. Put your spirit in me. 
God will not deny you, my friends. Wherever you're coming from, wherever you're going, God is faithful. Reach out to read your Bible. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let us return to the Lord and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's Isaiah 55. Something like 5 through 9, 3 through 9, something like that. Beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. God will be faithful to you. He'll be the friend that you need, the anchor for your soul. He'll be your best friend. You can talk to him about anything. You can talk to him as much as you want. You're never annoying to God. You might be annoying to other people, may or may not be, but God will never be annoyed by us. We can talk, we can cry, we can break down as much as we want, and God will always be there to listen. There is a, a way which seems good to a man, but the end of his death, what does it profit us if we gain the world and yet forfeit our soul? And God can save us from anything, from any situation. God will forgive us from our sins, no matter what we've done, no matter what we're going to do. If you seek God, you will find him, and you can live in continual repentance, and God will continually forgive you. Seventy times seven, a million times a million, he will forgive you, and he'll be faithful in a way that your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister can never be. We've been failed by the world, broken by the world, heartbroken by so many, but God is lighting in him. There's no darkness, there's no deceit. There's no deceptions. The cross really happened. Jesus really died. He really rose from the dead. He was a real person who lived and died and he lived again. And he's still living and he's coming back. And the storm clouds one day will be under his feet when he returns. He's going to bring an end to all things. And judgment will come upon this world, my friends. But we don't want you to have doubt. We want you to have life. We want you to have hope and peace and joy and love. We want you to know that every day you can have life with Jesus. One day each of us will die. And it doesn't matter how much money we have in our pockets, my friends. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, can be saved, will be saved. Young men, young ladies, the world cannot give you what you're looking for. There's a hole inside of you. The sin of this world is like eating McDonald's spiritually. It's going gonna, it's gonna to taste good, but it's going to leave you empty and broken. Jesus will give you life and peace. And he loves you. He cares about you. He cares about you. Read your Bible. Read the book of John. John 3, 16, so for God to love the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And he didn't come to condemn the world, he came so that the world through him might be saved. But many are condemned because we're condemned in our sin already, and one day God will give us life and peace and joy. He's going to give us hope, and we call upon him. God is faithful, my friends. Have a good night. We love you. Much love. Have a good day.